Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, in today's video, I am actually showing you how to go about setting up your tray for a classic eyelash extension application. Now, I know there's a ton of videos out there, but again, this is for my girls that are thinking about getting into eyelash extensions. So very briefly, I am going to be showing you how to go about taking care of the eyelashes prepping them prior to an actual application. So doing the lash wash, taping using the gel pads and also tape. So here on my tray, I'm gonna show you some of the items that I have. Let's start off by showing you the hygrometer, which is this right here. This is called the hygrometer and it measures the room's temperature and the room's humidity. So when you're working and doing eyelash extensions, having a hygrometer near where you are working or in your workspace is a very, very important. Next, we have our tweezers. So this is just the case that I keep my tweezers in. As you guys can see, I have different ones. When it comes to eyelash extensions, you really do have to find tweezers that really do work for you. A lot of times is trial and error, but for me, I do like working with the dolphin tweezers for isolation. Let me show you up close what they look like. Next, we have the Prolong Eyelash Wash. This is a mixture of Prolong along with distilled water in a foaming pump. And this is what I use to wash the lashes before the actual application. You will also need a fan to help you dry the lashes. And the tape that I use is the 3M Nest Care Sensitive Tape. It's a very popular tape uh, for eyelash extensions. And I also have this Nichibon tape. It works really well. If you're looking for a tape that is pure white and bright, it's the perfect one. This is the container where I store my lilash adhesive. You definitely want something that is nice and secure to keep everything nice and closed. This is a mirror. Usually this mirror is used to check for balance between both eyelashes to make sure that they are the same. We have our gel pads, okay. A sharpie now the sharpie is for your lash mapping and i recommend using something other than black just because most clients lashes are darker in color and so you want to use a sharpie that is going to you know be a little different so a pink a green this one's more like a gray tone but anything of your choice would work just fine if you plan on using a glue ring, then obviously a glue ring or two. Remember that usually during an eyelash extension application, you do typically change your glue out anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes. You will obviously get to know the glue that you'll be working with and how it dries. So that will all depend. So definitely one or two glue rings. Next, we have a spoolie. We have two micro brushes and a lip wand applicator. Now, if you are a lash tech or if you feel like you would like to apply primer um, before the actual application, then that is what you can use the micro brushes for or a lot of girls prefer the lip ones. So I just have them out just to show you guys options, but it is completely up to you as far as what you want to use. Lately, I have not been using primer before the actual eyelash extension application. I've simply been using the prolonged eye wash concentrate for cleansing the lashes and then going straight for the application. Now, it is totally okay to use a primer. If you feel like that definitely does help you with retention, then go for it and have it out on your tray. We have a little brush for the lash wash. You can use a brush, you could use a spoolie if you want to, or you can use a lip wand applicator. Either one of those work just fine. This here is a glue wiping cloth. 
and it is a non-woven fabric and so it is amazing for cleaning the tip of your adhesive if needed they typically come in a little jar like this where you can get them and you can just set a few on your tray as needed and lastly as you guys can see this is a supreme bonder that i typically use after i am done with the eyelash extension application when i apply this i typically use the micro brushes for the application usually this is applied about two to three minutes after you have applied your last eyelash extension and then you simply let them dry so this definitely does help and it is from Paris lash and last but not least of course we have our tile with some lashes obviously you will have the lashes of your choice depending on the look that you are going to be creating during the appointment and that is pretty much it along with that I also have a little towel for the eyelash cleansing application and of course we cannot forget about our water for the eyelash cleansing part so this one is usually placed right there so again i hope this is a good visual for you guys to see some of the items that are typically needed during a application so i hope you found this helpful now let's get into the rest of the video all right you guys so let's jump right into it here i am showing you what my lash wash foaming pump bottle looks like along with the prolong concentrate i already left you guys the measurements if you're interested in making your own concentrate you can go back to the beginning of this video where it's posted now again you're able to use any of these three to wash and cleanse the lashes with a brush a spoolie or a lip applicator wand regardless of what you use remember that the goal is to get the base of the lashes nice and cleansed obviously making sure that your client does not come in wearing any thick heavy mascara is ideal but do not be afraid to really get in there and get those lashes nicely washed cleansed you're prepping them ideally you do not want the natural lashes to have any type of residue oil and of course mascara so i did two pumps on each eye you're seeing me going back and forth doing some downward movement back and forth back and forth do not be shy get in there get everything completely off You can use a small hand towel or an absorbent paper towel. I usually like to get some of the foaminess off the client's eyes first before going in and removing with water. This is the bottle that I typically like to use for this service. Anytime before I'm about to spray or pour the water on the eye, I always say, water that way i'm letting the client know that i'm about to pour water on the eye it doesn't hurt it just does feel a little strange so you want to do that several times again you're trying to get everything off of the eye and get it nicely clean Now I'm grabbing my spoolie and my fan to brush the lashes upward and dry them before we start the application of the under eye pads. So here are the under eye pads that I'll be using for this demo. Remember the purpose of the gel pads, it is to protect the lower lashes and keeping the lower lashes away from the upper lashes to avoid getting glue on them. And of course it protects the client's skin from the use of the tweezers. So while applying, what I did is I did a brushing downward movement and I apply the gel pad not exactly directly under the waterline okay the goal is to not get the pads directly too too close to the waterline 
And that is because once the client closes their eyes, those gel pads tend to slide up. By doing that, you can cause some damage to the eye. Um, it could potentially go into the client's eye and scratch their cornea. It can irritate the eye. So there's a lot of things that can happen. So again, I'm doing this brushing movement, trying to get the lower lashes to settle down and then placing them. So any little hairs, okay, lower lashes that are sticking out, we will get them with the tape. So don't be too worried about getting every single lower lash under the gel pads because most likely it will not happen. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it does not. So here I am using the Nescare tape, cutting some of it, and then I'm cutting it in half to get two pieces. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to create an X pretty much, and I'm starting in the inner corner of her eye, brushing some of the hairs down that were left out, and simply placing it. The tape does go up a little higher than the actual gel pad does. And again, I'm doing it in an X formation, getting the inner corner hairs first and then the outer. Once I have done that, holding the inner part of the gel pad, you just saw me pull the outer part of the gel pad down a little bit. I always do that just because that's going to create a little bit more comfort for the client, okay? As you're doing this, always ask the client if anything is bothering them, if they're okay. Be very attentive to your client during this process. Remember that the client has to keep their eyes completely closed throughout the entire eyelash extension application. You are working with adhesives that are strong and the fumes can be very strong. And so to avoid um, irritation overall on the eyes, it's very important that the client understands to keep their eyes completely closed. Now, on this lovely model, you guys, her lower lashes were so long that I had to, in a way, hold some of her lashes away to keep them from going uh, towards the top of her lashes. It was a little complicated, but it's all good. We managed to get her nicely taped and that will happen. So you always want to do the best you can. Obviously, you can use any tape of your choice. Here, I'm going to show you how you can go about using a little bit of tape on the upper eyelid to help you with the isolation. So I placed it on her lid and I just raised it a little bit towards the top of her brow and that always helps with isolation and seeing the lashes a little bit better so this next tip is to help you see the inner corner lashes a little bit better we know that the inner and outer corner lashes are usually a little harder to lash so that will help you see the inner corner lashes a little bit better so that's just a little tip Next would be if you are going to try to lash in layers, you can detack your tape and then simply fold some of the client's natural lashes back. If you need to use your tweezers to pull some of the natural lashes out like I am doing here, then you can do that. And again, this will help you with isolation, lashing in layers and getting every single lash during your appointment time. So anyways, these are just small tips that I think are very useful and you can definitely give them a try once you start lashing. Once your client is nice and prepped and ready to go, then if you will be using primer, then this would be the perfect time to apply the primer on the lashes before you start the actual eyelash extension application. And that is pretty much it. You will be free to start applying your lashes. And that is it, you guys. These are just the tweezers that I use, that I typically use, that I'm liking at the moment. And this is me just showing you guys how I remove the under eye pads. Always be careful by kind of stretching the client's skin out and moving very slow. Obviously, by the time you will be removing this, the client will have extensions on. So you wanna be very, very careful. And that is it for this video. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to keep going, keep growing, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.